Okay, thank you. Um, I thank the organizer to invite me to, uh, uh, for this seminar. I am um, Francois Gillet. I'm professor in plant ecology, community ecology, and, and numerical ecology uh, in uh, Besançon University. And um, I will speak now uh, about uh, some methods that uh, are in the framework of canonical ordination when you have several tables to analyze together, uh, but with symmetric methods. So, um, how can we relate two sets of variables describing the same object? So this is the, the main question we have to, to address here. So, you have seen yesterday, I think, um, with uh, Pierre and Daniel, uh, asymmetric approaches based on regression. Uh, these uh, are based on, you, you can use, if you have only, uh, if you want only to, 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 uh, to uh, address the, the response of one variable uh, with a set of explanatory variables. In, in another data set, you can uh, apply multiple linear regression, of course. You have, in this case, one numeric response variables and several explanatory variables. This requires multiple tests, and we have seen uh, um, that there is a problem with multiple tests, and you have to correct p-values for that. But the main problem here is that you ignore, ignore uh, the correlations among the response variables, which are indeed correlated and, and linked together. So you can use, of course, uh, multivariate linear regression using canonical ordination, CCA methods, RDA, DBRDA, etc. Well, you have one response matrix Y and one exploratory uh, matrix X. And you can use a global permutation test of the causal relationship from one set to the, to the other. So you suppose here that you have response variables in, in one side and explanatory variables on the other side. And you have, you have seen that, uh, the possibility of variance partitioning among several subsets of explanatory variables. The alternative is to consider symmetric approaches based on correlation. Um, in the the first, the first idea, perhaps, is to use pairwise linear or rank correlations. Um, uh, they, are, they, they can be useful to detect linear or, or monotonic uh, relationship between individual numeric variables. But, uh, for example, using a Pearson R or a Spearman or Kendall, uh, you get a, a matrix or a sc scatter matrix of the, uh, the bivariate relationships between the, the, the variables, uh, for example, between the species and some environmental variables, etc. But it's, uh, it could be very cumbersome with many variables. So one solution in this symmetric case is to use global symmetric association between the two sets of variables. And here I, I give a list, it is not exhaustive, uh, but um, a list of uh, different methods that have been proposed to, to address this question, to link two sets, two uh, tables of, of, uh, of variables in a symmetric way. Uh, perhaps the oldest one is the canonical correlation analysis, which is uh, described in the book, um, but I, I will not detail it. You have uh, the family of Procrustes, so-called Procrustes analysis, uh, with ordinary or generalized Procrustes analysis, which relate um, um, to ordination uh, diagrams of, of the, the two sets of variables. You have co-inertia analysis, and I will detail more of this uh, method, and co correspondence analysis, a relatively recent method uh, based on, on uh, correspondence analysis of two tables 
um, generally community uh, tables uh, or species uh, matrices. And uh, the last one is multiple factor analysis, which I will uh, detail also. So, so in this case, there is no response, no explanatory variables. Both play the same role. But well, the question is, why and when can you uh, use this uh, symmetric canonical ordination method instead of, of uh, well-established uh, constrained ordination. So constrained ordination such as CCA or RDA uh, should be preferred if you have both the, the, these three conditions. First, um, you, make, you can make explicit or generally implicit hypothesis uh, about uh, a linear or a unimodal causal relationship between the variables uh, in the two data sets or the two or more data sets, generally two. Um, no feedback loop is assumed. So um, biological communities are supposed to not influence their environment. And this is sometimes something that we can think about. Uh, there is not only uh, an influence of environment on, on biology, but also the, the biological communities can, can modify their environment and have complex, more complex interactions with feed, feedback loops between, between the community and, and its environment. So in this case, you can prefer some symmetrical, symmetric uh, approach. And last, the last uh, condition is more technical. But in fact, um, to, to apply a constrained ordination, you, the number of objects, the number of sites, must be much higher than the number of explanatory variables. If you have more exp uh, variables than sites, you cannot apply this. Or you have to reduce the number of explanatory variables by using uh, forward selection or so on. So in this if these different conditions are not met, uh, symmetric coupling methods uh, such, as, such as coinage analysis or multiple factor analysis may be useful. In this case, <coughs> uh, you don't assume any linear unidirectional causality between one set of variables and the other set of variables. Um, it is possible to, to analyze relationships among any number of groups of variables. We can see that it is very useful. You can have as much as, as many uh, group as you, you want uh, for these variables. And there is no constraint on the number of variables compared to the number of sites. And this is often an argument, uh, but we can discuss because uh, when we, we have to advise students uh, to organize their, their, their uh, sampling or experimental design, we advocate that uh, uh, they, they, may, they make more, uh, more sites, more uh, samples, uh, and limit the number of variables to measure than the contrary. It's a general advice. It's always better to have more rows in your matrix than columns, but it's not always possible, especially with species, with species for example. So, um, what is the principle of, of this uh, symmetric coupling? Um, the first idea, when you want to couple uh, two tables, is to merge, is simply to merge the two tables, to, to make only one table from the two tables by binding columns in a single table. This is merging. And with this, uh, so you put the, the columns with the species and the columns with the uh, environmental variables, for example, in the same table. It's perhaps not the uh, best idea, but uh, it's the first idea we can, we can have. Um, <coughs> 
this approach is meaningful normally only if the inertia, the total variation of each of the two tables is similar. And it's generally not the case, of course. And in this case, you can uh, standardize, cen center and scale uh, the, the data or use a PCI, PCA on the correlation matrix uh, with this um, uh, merge table. A better approach would be perhaps to, to cross the two tables um, using a matrix product. Uh, in this case, you have um, N species and P environmental variables and uh, you can simply apply a matrix product of X and Y and perform the PCA on the correlation of or the covariance matrix. An example to illustrate this, I will use uh, always the, the, the same example. I don't think you have seen it already. Uh, in the previous, no, no, you have not used the, this data set. This data set is uh, available from the vegan uh, air, pa air package. Uh, it's called Dune. Dune contains the, the species matrix and Dune dot env the environment, the, the environmental uh, data. So uh, it is about the vegetation, the plant communities, and, and uh, its environment, their environment in Dutch dune meadows. Um, <coughs> it looks like this. Uh, you have uh, here in the a partial view of, of the dune uh, data set, you have 20 sites and 30 species, plant species here in columns, and uh, uh, here are uh, semi-quantitative codes of abundance of, of this of cover of these species from 1 to, to 9, and 0 means absence of the species, okay? Um, <coughs> <coughs> the environmental uh, matrix data frame is made of the same 20 uh, sites and five uh, variables. And as, as you can see here in the summary of this, of this uh, data frame, the original data set is uh, made of mixed variables. You have, for example, the depth of the A1 organomineral horizon of the soil, which is quantitative. You have um, moisture, which is, in fact, uh, an ordinal semi-quantitative variable for the soil moisture uh, between one and five, uh, between one and five, and you have the management which is purely qualitative. Uh, this is summarized here. So you have uh, uh, meadows used uh, for biological farming, uh, organic farming, uh, for hobby farming, nature conservation management, or standard farming. And you have another uh, variable called use, which is uh, um, the main management, agricultural management of these meadows. It I use uh, hay fields for hay production, mowing, or if they are, are used for pasture, grazing, or both, hay pasture. And here also, again, uh, um, semi-quantitative uh, um, uh, no, uh, qualitative variable. Sometimes we can use, uh, is it as a quantitative, but uh, semi-quantitative. And the, the last one is like moisture, is the manner, is the fertilization of the, of the meadow, on a semi-quantitative scale. So if you have here the, the summary of another version of the, of the data, we can, we, we must use when uh, qualitative variables are not uh, allowed by the method. For example, if you perform PCA, you cannot, you cannot directly use this matrix, of, of course. You have to transform it and to record the data set to, in order to get only numeric variables. And here you have uh, uh, moisture is considered as quantitative, 
uh, as well as manor. Um, and uh, hayfield pasture are uh, two uh, derived from, from, from use, and uh, uh, they are dummy variables, binary, binary variables, 0, 1. And uh, if you have hay pasture, we check one for each of these uh, binary variables. And you have the qualitative here, which was transformed, coded as dummy variables, too. Okay? Wait, well, uh, apply the, the two uh, first ideas to these, to these data sets. So, so the, the first idea is to merge the two mat matrices. So um, here is the, the, the code in R. So we, we, make, we built an AUSP uh, data frame by binding the environment numeric, the numeric version of the environmental data set and the species data set. And we can use the uh, vegan function RDA, you know already, um, which makes uh, uh, perform a PCA on this uh, table. Of course, because of the big differences uh, between the, the units and uh, the values in these uh, different variables, heterogeneous table, we have to, to put scale. True, as true to uh, make the PCA, to perform the PCA on a correlation matrix. And the result looks like this. <coughs> uh, we have merged, so there is uh, numeric environmental variables and species abundances. And uh, in this biplot scaling one, you can see the, um, the different correlations uh, <coughs> between uh, so scale two would be will be better to see the correlation, but you can see uh, what are the the main variables influencing the the, the principal components. And okay, but the problem here you get a result which is uh, interpretable, but um, <coughs> it's not an, an ideal configuration because the, the inertia of the two of the, the two uh, original tables is unbalanced and you can get uh, sometimes st strange results with this method <coughs> so it's not something we can advise now merging the two matrices matrices is uh, an interesting uh, solution <coughs> It's the same idea, but you can, of course, uh, here we, we didn't consider um, the problem here. We, yes, uh, I forgot this. Um, we have only standardized the species, so the, the zero disappear. Hmm? Uh, all the abundances are now with the mean of zero. So, um, Absence is completely ignored in this in this first analysis. To address this problem, we can use instead of the uh, original species matrix, we can use uh, the Hellinger transformed species matrix. You are now familiar with this, I suppose. Um, and uh, we bind we bind with uh, the the scaled uh, numeric environmental table and uh, we use uh, the decostan function in vegan with the argument with the uh, option ranged to scale all variables in the range 0 1 so that they will be comparable and you can uh, perform the PCA on this and you get this result that you can compare with the previous one and it's perhaps more um, correct. Um, and here you, we perform the PCR on the covariance matrix, uh, not on the correlation matrix, to conserve the, the, the variance of the different variables. But the, the problem remains that uh, inertia between the, the two uh, uh, tables uh, is uh, unbalanced. So 
Um, now we can cross the two matrices. And uh, here, they're just an example, which perhaps uh, not something, uh, the, 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 bet, the best solution. But here, I used, uh, for example, species profiles. It means the relative abundances by species. So for this, I use the decostant function with mar total option with margin uh, two do uh, by, by columns. It's um, standardization by column. And in this case, we focus on the um, ecological niche of the, of, the, of the species more than the difference in the, between the sites, among the sites. And we can do the mat uh, matrix product uh, here uh, with this. Uh, we have to transpose the, the species matrix and multiply by the scaled environmental matrix and uh, perform a PCA on the covariance matrix of this uh, table. And this is interesting here. The, the objects have, have disappeared, of course. Now you have no objects in this ordination, but uh, you have uh, the, the species which play the role of site and uh, the arrows correspond to the uh, environmental variables. And this, uh, you get um, a relatively nice picture of uh, the influence of uh, well, the relationship between the different variables um, represented as, as uh, gradients and uh, vectors and uh, the, the different species here. Yes, but it's not, um, um, how to say that, uh, not a traditional way of uh, uh, doing or merging the, this table. There are more elegant ways to do it. And the first one I will present you is the so-called co-inertia analysis. Co-inertia analysis was developed by, by my colleagues in Lyon, in France, and uh, is available only in R in the uh, ADE4 library package. Uh, briefly, the principle of this of this uh, co-inertia analysis, without enter into the into de details, uh, the, the idea is uh, to perform first separate ordinations uh, of the species matrix and of the environmental matrix here to get uh, uh, the to max to find axes, uh, com principal components, in fact, that maximize inertia in each table. Uh, principal components or factors in, in, in uh, correspondence analysis, it depends, uh, for species uh, and uh, for uh, environmental variables. And uh, the, the, the co-inertia analysis wa will aim at finding a couple of co-inertia axes for species and for environment, uh, on which the sites are projected. Um, and the, this analysis maximizes the squared covariance between the projections of the sites on the co axis. In fact, you have here the, the detail of the uh, calculation of, the, of this uh, squared covariance. You, you can see that. Uh, it's, it's a compromise between the squared correlation between the variance of sites in the species viewpoint and the variance of sites in the environmental viewpoint. This is very well explained in the paper of uh, Stefan Ray and, and collaborator in, uh, in ecology. Um, so the, the, this uh, method is, is a very flexible uh, method um, which allows uh, various possibilities for, for symmetric coupling of two tables. There is no constraint on the number and the nature of the variables in each table. There is a possibility to combine different ordinations after different potential standardizations of pre-transformations of the, of, of the data. The only constraint you have is that raw weights must be 
identical in the two ordinations. So you have to check that the, this, um, this condition is, is, uh, is okay. And you can use um, the core inertia function in the AD4R package to perform the core inertia analysis. And you can use the so-called RV. I, I didn't get any explanation about the abbreviation RV. Perhaps uh, <laughs> my colleagues know. <laughs> uh, I, I search about this. So uh, it's called RV coefficient. Uh, this is RV coefficient, uh, the detail is here, uh, measures, the, in fact, the similarity between the geometrical representations derived from each centered matrices X and Y. And y. So the, uh, the species and the environmental matrices are, are, or the two matrices in, the, in general um, are centered and uh, to calculate, to compute this RV coefficient which is uh, technically, which is the ratio of the total co-inertia co to the square root of the product of the square total inertias of the separate analysis. And it is, of course, a symmetrical um, measure. It's ranged from 0 to 1. 0 means that the two matrices are completely independent, and 1 uh, means that they are completely homothetic. And this RV coefficient can be, can be um, tested by permutations or by um, an approximation of the, of the distribution uh, with a parametric test that are more uh, efficient and more uh, rapid. This is described in the paper of Jocelyn. I have uh, I give you at the end of my presentation a list of these of the different references. Yes. or a similarity or yes um, there are uh, what is interesting with coin analysis that there is um, yes Thank you very much, Pierre. <laughs> the mystery is here. OK. Uh, thank you. Uh, so in this coronal analysis, you have uh, 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 a lot of flexibility. Um, you can apply various uh, pre-transformation of species abundances prior to, to PCA. For example, if you use PCA for the species uh, uh, matrix, uh, using either species profiles, relative abundance per species, uh, site profiles, relative abundance per site, for example, the famous Hellinger standardization or core transformation. You can use double profiles, for example, the chi-square double standardization, etc. You can use um, various ordination methods for the preliminary separate analysis of, of each table. Basically, you, you can use, of course, a PCA on a covariance or a correlation matrix. You can use CA, correspondent analysis, uh, for the species matrix, or if you use a contingency table. You can use, I don't know if you have speak, well, spoken about it, uh, multiple correspondence analysis if you have a table with only qualitative variables. It's a variant of PCA for, for uh, qualitative variables. Or you can use uh, also uh, PCOA, principal coordinate analysis, based on any resemblance matrix, providing that it is uh, metric and Euclidean, uh, based on metric or Euclidean distances. For example, the Jacquard uh, distance is OK. Here are the results with, uh, with our example uh, of the Dune 
meadows um, of a first example of uh, uh, co inertia analysis. Here we have performed correspondence analysis on the row species matrix without transformation, of course, no need for that. And a PCA correlation on the numeric and variable matrix X. And here is the result you get with the, um, by default, you can also detail each uh, plot, but uh, uh, you have here all the, the main graphical information uh, out of this analysis. You have the RV coefficient here. You have here the eigenvalues. You have here the, the representation of the position of the axis uh, for the species or for the environmental variables. Uh, no, the environmental here and the species here, sorry. And you have here, interestingly, the, the position of the, um, of the, the, the sites uh, from the point of view of the, uh, uh, from the environment here at the basis of the arrow to the point of view of the uh, species there. So you, you can see in this plot the, the correspondence between the, the, the different, um, the influence of these different point of view on the, on the data. And you have, you see, the projection of the species and here of the environmental variables. Um, here, some, uh, an alternative to the, to the previous choices. We have chosen here a PCA uh, on the covariance matrix on the Hellinger transformed species matrix Y. And here, the same PCA correlation on the numeric environmental matrix. And you can see there, uh, there is no so much difference. Yes, of course. I prefer that last solution yes. because it's more consistent with the principle of co inertia analysis. In your previous slide, if you look at the top, you did a CA on the ET data <coughs> and a PT on the uh, environmental data. Now, in co inertia analysis, there is a condition yes. that the weights must be the same in yes. the analysis. So you either have to take the weights of CA that depends on each row. Yes. Uh, or take the weights of the environmental metrics that are all uh, equal, all one, and apply that to C. And that will lead to two different solutions. Yeah. So I discussed that at length with uh, Chris Andre when I was writing the numerical ecology book. And we concluded that actually there is no logical way of deciding between these two solutions that produce totally different results. Yeah. So yours. Is, would be the appropriate way yeah, uh, I didn't give the, the detail, but here I, I choose to um, to use the weights from the, the the row weights from the CA to to perform the the PCA. It's the uh, yeah yeah. Mm. You you have not this problem here because all all rows have have the same weight in in the case of the PCA. So thank you for your or your remark. So the last uh, method I would like to present you is called multiple factor analysis. It's also another method developed by French uh, biostatisticians in Rennes this time. And um, the, it's a very flexible method too. Um, the idea is to um, to perform a global ordination of several subsets of variables describing the same object uh, based on PCA, again. So we have that problem <laughs> if you use uh, always PCA. Um, so the, 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 the only restriction is that so the variables inside within each subset should be homogeneous, so the, they should be only qualitative or only quantitative or um, they have to be scaled or not and yes you have to to, to choose to uh, organize your data 
uh, with a relatively homogeneous subsets. So you can use row quantitative variables if they are homogeneous. In this case, the PCA on the covariance matrix will be applied. Or you have to scale these quantitative variables if they have heterogeneous, typically with uh, environmental variables, we have this case. Or you can use uh, a set of qualitative variables as well. A subset of variables may be active or passive. In this case, uh, they are called uh, supplementary groups, and they are not used to, 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 set the, to perform the analysis, but they are projected a posteriori in, uh, in, the, uh, in the analysis. Uh, the subsets of variables are weighted. This is the principle of this uh, multiple factor analysis, so that their influence is equivalent. And this is achieved by dividing uh, by the first eigenvalue, eigenvalue of the first axis of each uh, data table. You have here an illustration I, I took from this uh, excellent paper. Uh, you can read it. It's very interesting to summarize and uh, give more details uh, about this method. So the first step here. Um, the second step, we compute generalized PCA on each of the k tables of the, of the tables. Generalized PCA means means that you can also use for qualitative variables. You can use um, um, uh, what we have already uh, mentioned: multiple correspondence analysis. So the the third step is to normalize each table by dividing it by the first uh, eigenvalue and concatenate the, the three um, normalized tables and perform a simple PCA on this uh, concatenate table to get the global PCA, which is the, the MF, MFA result. An example, always the same example of application. So with the Dune uh, example, uh, you use, we use here, you, you can, you can uh, use the MFA um, like this function of ADA4, and you, you get this result. Or I will more detail uh, another uh, library to do this which is more flexible. But uh, with AD4, um, here I use two subsets of variables, uh, the Hellinger species, uh, transform species matrix and the numeric dune environmental matrix, which is necessary with the AD4 function. Uh, and we get this result. So you can see here the position uh, the scores of the sites, uh, the row projection, with the point of view of the two data sets, and here the projection of the columns, the species, and the environmental uh, uh, variables, and the, the position of the first axis of the individual uh, ordinations. So, um, what is interesting with, uh, with the uh, MFA is uh, that you can have more groups than two. Uh, and uh, you can, here, for example, in the June example, I have uh, considered different groups of uh, plant species, the forbs, the grasses. Uh, we have, I distinguish the environmental uh, variable between soil uh, variables, land use, and I use two um, passive groups, supplementary groups, for shrubs and, and mosses, which are uh, not very important in the, in the data set, just for the exercise. And I use here the MFA in cap scale. Uh, the same name, but uh, sometimes something different. In the factor mine R uh, package, uh, factor mine R package is uh, developed by the authors of this method. 
And here is the script to do this. And uh, you get uh, a number of uh, uh, outputs for, for, from this uh, MFA that you can uh, uh, examine in detail. I will not do it here. I will more insist on the graphical uh, outputs. So here you have uh, the partial axis of separate ordination projected on the global PCA uh, of the multi-factor analysis. And you can see the, the, the different uh, groups, for example, uh, the grasses, which are uh, strongly correlated with, uh, with the first axis of this uh, global PCA. I don't know. Uh, here you have the eigenvalues. Here you can get the correlations among the numeric variables with colors corresponding to the different groups, subsets you analyze. And uh, you, you can also restrict the projection if you have a lot, a lot of variables. You can restrict the number by setting a probability or uh, uh, from a permutation test or some uh, other uh, criteria to, to limit the number of uh, the most significant variables. But you can see the the different correlations, the correlations between the different variables in the, in the different data sets. There is no explanatory variable here. And uh, you can also, if you have qualitative variables, it is the case here, you can uh, project here the centroids of these quantitative variables uh, here with the, with the label. And uh, you have also the different points of view uh, for the active um, subsets. You can see, for example, that, that uh, Hayfield and uh, uh, SF and NM, which are management variables, are, uh, influence more uh, axis 2 than axis 1. And uh, here you can view also the, the global and partial projection of the sites uh, with the different points of view. And here, the last graphic, you can see the contribution of the groups to the main MFA, MFA axis. Uh, and you can see here the, the land use, which is expressed mostly on, on, on axis 2 and uh, the, resp the, the grasses, soil, and four variables are more uh, expressed on axis one. And here you can see the, the passive uh, subsets. You can uh, overlay uh, the result of a cluster analysis uh, on the scores of the global PCA uh, of the sites using the square Euclidean distance and the world method. And you, you can get this picture with uh, three main groups uh, of, um, of sites. Uh, with the advantage here, you have this classification made on uh, a combination of the different points of view uh, on the, the, the different subsets of variables that describe the, the sites. Here are the RV coefficients with this data. Um, you can uh, test this. I use the, the, the test proposed by uh, Jos et al. Uh, collaborat and, and, uh, collaborators in, uh, in this paper with the coef RV function. And you have the p-values there and uh, the RV coefficients in the upper uh, part of the matrix. Um, and you can see that there is a strong correlation, a strong relationship between uh, form, grass, and soil. Uh, we, we have no test for land use because uh, uh, with this function, we cannot uh, 
apply it to, to qualitative uh, variables. But, but we get the, the RV coefficient from the output of the, of the MFA. It, it's probably significant, taking into account the, the numbers. You see, land use is strongly connected with, of course, the vegetation and the soil. Okay, um, just some words about um, uh, an extension of multiple factor analysis called hierarchical multiple factor analysis. It's an extension to the case where you, your, your data are, are organized in the nested, uh, nested groups, uh, hierarchically organized. You're, so you have several nested partitions of variables. And this, this case, HMFA, balances the role of each group related to its node in the hierarchy. You have a hierarchy of, of variables, and you can uh, take into account this hierarchy in the analysis. So to understand it, the example of my dune meadows, you have vegetation, and you have environment. This is the second level of the, of the hierarchy, the first level being the, uh, the groups uh, we considered before, forb species, the grass species, the shrub species, the moss species, nested in the vegetation, and soil and land use nested in the environment. And um, it's relatively easy to do it. You have to define the, 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 the different groups at the, at the uh, bottom level. Uh, you have to uh, assign these groups to a hierarchy here uh, by giving simply the number of, um, of subsets in each uh, group of the, of the second level. And here, you use the function H MFA to uh, perform the analysis. And you get this result. Uh, you get the eigenvalues expressed here in the percentage of variation expressed by the different axes. And you can see that here we can only consider the two first axes. You get the correlation circle with the relationship between the, uh, the different variables in the, in the groups. Uh, the, the scores and the projection of the sites and, the, and of the qualitative variables are centered here. You can have a super, superimposed representation of the partial clouds at the highest level species environment, or at the basic level. A bit more confusing here. But, <laughs> but you can, of course, you can isolate each point of view in a different graph, for example, to, to analyze it. And you have here the group's representation. Uh, such as in, in, the, in the MFA. Uh, and uh, here you can perform, I used here uh, to the hierarchical clustering, I used uh, a function in the factor mine R um, library. And uh, with uh, here four groups, it's a classification based on the scores of the sites uh, in the, in the high MFA, and you can see here, the uh, projection of this uh, dendrogram with the four groups and even a 3D representation, which is nice, <laughs> I, I find, uh, very nice. Uh, but more, probably not the more readable, but um, interesting. So you have here the code for this, and it's very easy to do. Okay. To end, uh, I have some minutes left. Yes, <coughs> uh, two applications I will uh, I would like to, to, to show you the published applications of this 
uh, approach in ecology or in environmental sciences, because it's our topic. I forgot to, 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 to tell you that these uh, methods, uh, multiple factor analysis was developed in uh, sensory metrics in, uh, uh, how to say that, uh, when you compare the, the chemistry of elements with the, the, the perceptions of people, uh, et cetera. It, 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 it's in this field that these methods were, were developed at the, uh, at the beginning. But, but now they have more and more success in ecology or in environmental sciences. Um, first paper, sorry, is a paper I, I wrote with a, a colleague at the Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle in Paris. Uh, it was uh, to analyze a very, a very complex data set uh, uh, of, uh, uh, about vegetation, soil fauna, humus components uh, in a subalpine uh, spruce forest ecosystem. And for this, we used uh, hierarchical multiple factor analysis. I will not enter much in the, into the details. You can read the paper if you are interested. Uh, the data was this. We have data about uh, vegetation, above ground vegetation. We have five depths for the observation of the humus layers and the, the soil fauna. And in each uh, layer, we had uh, um, inventory of uh, samples of the Columbola species, Oribatida genera, Actinedida families. So, so the, it was not the same resolution, uh, taxonomic resolution, as you can see, and other soil animal taxa, and uh, humus components um, uh, describing these different uh, layers. And with this data, it was relatively complicated, and we chose to uh, apply a hier hierarchical. Um, MFA. Yes, one of the reasons, it was perhaps we can consider that there is some explanatory and response variables in this, in this uh, topic, but in fact we, we, we had uh, uh, less uh, rows than, than columns because there, was, there were a lot of variables describing this, uh, these layers. So uh, it was the reason why we apply this method. And here you can have some uh, uh, extracted from, from the paper. You have uh, some results. You have here the scatter plot of the, of the sampling points uh, on the two first axes uh, for the 11 habitats, which are uh, labeled here, and the interpretation in terms of on humus forms was an, a very interesting result. I cannot uh, enter into details, read the paper. And here you have, for example, the position of plant groups only, uh, which is the uh, row heads, uh, compared to the barycenter here at the uh, arrow basis for the 11 habitats. The barycenter is the, the, the score of the, the global um, PCA, the analysis. And here, the trajectory, the position of some animal taxa uh, uh, in this, um, in this uh, plot. So, okay, across depth, because uh, these symbols represent here the different depths. And uh, it was interesting to, to, to show um, the, the different uh, representation of these, of these uh, tax, taxonomic groups um, uh, across the, the soil depth. The second and last uh, example is uh, more in uh, environmental science in general, in the environmental application. Uh, it, here it was um, a paper about the use of uh, multiple factor analysis to relate uh, heavy metals and organic compounds, uh, pollutants, etc., in the in sediment samples. And I choose this example because it was in the Bay of Trieste here. Uh, this uh, study was made by Belgian people, but... Uh, okay. And uh, 
in this paper, it, it's uh, pedagogically interesting because they, they, they begin by a PCA. They, they put all the, the, the variables, the chemical variables together, uh, and they make the, well, what, we, what I presented at the beginning of my, my talk. And with, um, of course, on a, on a correlation matrix, a PCA and a correlation matrix with this. And they, they got this representation, for example, of the, of the variables. And uh, they uh, interpolate the uh, scores on the first axis to get this, this map. Um, and they compare to the results of uh, multiple factor analysis where you can see that here we're separating heavy metals and uh, organic compounds. Uh, we have a quite different picture with uh, uh, all these variables here along axis one. And some of them, some um, heavy metals here, um, influencing more axis two. And if we concentrate on axis one, uh, they can do this uh, second map based on the interpolation map of the, of the scores of the, these points here. I'll let you read the paper if you're interested by the result by itself. Uh, OK, that's all. The, this is a list of uh, the references uh, I give here. And um, I put in the website, you can find the, the R script I used to to analyze the Dune data so you can explore by yourself. And tomorrow, uh, at the same time, we will go into the practicals of this uh, method and we, we will use the famous Do River data set for that to apply co-inertia analysis and, and uh, multiple factor analysis. Thank you. Yes, you have questions? <laughs>